You know, uh, Jacob's having great luck with his animal husbandry, and the way he arranged it that most of the livestock turned out to be speckled or ring-necked, whereby they were his. And you might think, well, he was really conniving to pull that off. You're going to find out today that it was God's idea. God told him how to do that. So you see, the sticks didn't have anything to do with it. It was the shoot that put him by certain rams. But it was God all the time. God will always speak to you if you trust him and, and allow him to lead you into uh, the way to, to outgun the enemy, so to speak. Father will always stand by his elect. You can count on it. That's his promise, and he always keeps his word. So having said that, chapter 31, Jacob growing quite, quite rich. It's about time that he goes back to his original country. We're going to do that today. Chapter 31, verse 1, and uh, with that word of wisdom from our father, it reads, And he heard the words of Laban's sons, that's a grumbling, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. He's taken, he's taken away everything that our father has, which means we're out of it too. Verse 2, And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before, for he was cool and fast. Laban was kind of conniving himself, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't an outright crook. It's just that he took shortcuts, and he wasn't bashful about it. Verse 3, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Now, I mean, you can't beat a deal like that. Our father telling him to return, and the fact that he will be with him, so not too much can go wrong when that happens because God will see that it's corrected. You can always count on that. It makes it complete. Verse 4, And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. He warned them out away from the, the, the property. Out, um, and it shows his love for them. Verse three, uh, 5, and he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. Almighty God has spoken to me. Verse 6, And you know that with all my power I have served your father. You know, as hard as I could, I've worked for him. I worked, seven years he worked for each of, each of the girls. And in another period of time, he worked herding cattle and, and uh, so forth. Seven, and your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times. Never would keep his word. But God suffered him not to hurt me. God permitted him to do that. He never, he never got away with it, in other words. God always could see to that. Verse 8. If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said thus, the ring stake shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring stake. Verse 9, Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. He, he's made me wealthy from this. Verse 10, And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring stakes, speckled, and grizzled. Remember, this is God giving him a vision on how to accomplish this. Verse 11, And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. Verse 12, and he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ringstaked, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. God will always head off the enemy or the opposition. You can count on it. 
He will always give you the upper hand. Why? He's in, con he's in control. He's on the throne. And when you're serving him, and when you're producing fruit, he's going to see to it. So you see, it wasn't that Laban uh, was being ripped off necessarily by Jacob, but God, Almighty God, had shown Jacob how to overcome and how to get the advantage of kindly somebody that liked to cut corners. Verse 13, and the angel of the Lord would continue, I am the God of Bethel, that's the house of God, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou bowest, bowest the a vow unto me, now arise and get thee out of this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. That's an order from Almighty God. And not only that, but God is reminding him way back when he first came to this land, the pillar that he used that opened the very gates of heaven. And don't ever forget, that's Christ. That's the way you find heaven is through the Savior. Verse 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? In other words, um, it, we should inherit something from him. Verse 15, Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. He's kept the dowry. We didn't get it. He has ripped us off. He sold us to you. In other words, you could almost say he prostituted them and kept the money. Verse 16, For all the riches which God hath taken from our Father that is ours and our children's, now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do, you carry on, you go for it. In other words, they're sticking with their husband. The old, their father hasn't done them all that well. And, um, and they're, they're, in other words, they're backing their husband. 100%. 17. Uh, then Jacob rose up, and he set his sons and his wives upon camels, 18, and he had them to ride. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Pandemaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. He was ready to travel, 19. And Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Now, this is the teraphim. It's a little old house god, usually made of gold, and that's probably why she took it. It wasn't, uh, but it lets you know that Laban didn't necessarily worship the living god. He had little household gods along, and um, certainly um, uh, Rachel knew the value of the little golden thing, she took it. She's going to get her part of the inheritance. 20, and Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian. He, he, he was naturally not an Assyrian. He was uh, of the um, uh, house of Haran, the brother of Abraham. In that he told him not that he fled. He, he left unaware that uh, not letting um, Laban know anything about it. Laban probably wouldn't have found out if he hadn't gone to share the sheep, 21. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, that'd be the river Euphrates, and he set his face towards Mount Gilad. That's a, a, a rocky portion, 22. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. I mean, here, here goes Laban's moneymaker. What's he going to do now? But Laban deep down knows that the living God has blessed uh, Jacob. And in turn, Laban's been blessed also. You know, remember what Laban had when Jacob came there. Little old Rachel was the only one it took to tend his sheep. He didn't have a very big herd. Now he's got many people ha uh, handling his herds. Verse 23, 
And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in Mount Gilad. 24, And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Don't you try to put any curse on him. Don't you try to take advantage of him. This was Almighty God speaking to Laban, and Laban knew to listen, whether he had little household gods or not. He was raised in Abraham's family, Abraham's brother. Abraham would have been his uncle, and um, he knew better. Verse 25, then Laban overtook Jacob. Now, Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brother, pitched in the Mount of Gilad. 26. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken with a sword? Now, um, if I remember right, um, Jacob had worked 14 years to gain these wives with dowry. In other words, they may have been Laban's daughters, but they were his wives, and rightfully so. Um, Laban had sold them. So, in as much as he had sold his daughters, it might be a little question as to whether he had that kind of claim over them. 27. And Laban continues accusations. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret, and with harp? I wouldn't have bet on it. Sure wouldn't have bet on it. I, he would have done everything in the world to hang on to him to keep him there. Verse 28. And hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. Uh, he's kind of pushing it here. He's not actually um, yet uh, falsely accusing him, but he's pushing it. He's pushing buttons. 29. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. I can do it. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. I, I know that God's watching over you. I, I wouldn't have bet that he could have done him all that much harm. Jacob could pretty well take care of himself. Verse 30, And now... Though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou soar longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And here he's making an accusation. Uh, these household gods, the teraphim. Now naturally, Jacob doesn't know that Rachel has taken this thing. Jacob has never stolen a thing in his life. He's always dealt fairly and squarely. And Laban has stepped one step too far when he accuses Jacob of stealing something, especially a fake God. Verse 31, And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. 32, With Whomsoever thou findest thy goods, let him not live. For our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee, for Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Uh, Jacob kind of, his, their Rachel being his favorite, he's passed a death sentence on her. She, uh, being of her own father, she's, she's going to know how to handle this, but unfortunately she will die when she gives her second son birth. That would be Benjamin, and uh, so it is. But she is her own 
father's daughter, as you will see here now, 33. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Uh-oh. Here's where the little teraphim, firm, uh, teraphim is. 34. And Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and set upon them. And Laban searched all the tent but found them not. This is a this is a, a saddle, a woman's saddle, we'll call it, that is placed upon the camel. She's sitting on it, okay, in the tent. Thirty-four. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and set them, uh, and Laban searched all the tent but found them not. Thirty-five to continue, and she said to her father, "Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me." And he searched, but found not the images. He left. He didn't find them. So she was about as sharp as the old man was, her dad. 36. And Jacob was wroth and cowed with Laban. He'd been called a thief. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin? that thou hast so haltly pursued after me, like as if I was a criminal. And certainly he was an honest man. And again, he did not know that Rachel had taken this teraphim. 37, whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren, and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. Let's just get it right out here in the open. Let's get right down where the rubber meets the road. Verse 38. This 20 years, Jacob continues, this 20 years have I been with thee. The ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. I didn't touch any of your stuff. Nine, that which was torn of beast, I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. I took, I, I covered it from my own. Of my hand didst thou require it, neither uh, stole, stolen by day or stolen by night. In other words, uh, um, I've always been honest, over more than honest with you. 40. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. I was out there herding and taking care of the herd when it was freezing and when it was over hot. I never complained about it. I was always there tending what, my business, what I was supposed to do. 41, thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle. And thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Uh, in other words, what can Laban say? I mean, he's guilty as sin about changing the wages. He just liked to cut corners. Verse 42, except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac hath been with me, surely sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. He made it real clear to you. Remember, Jacob's kind of saying, if you had your way, you would take everything I have and return it back. But Almighty God's not going to let it happen. Why? God had promised him, I'm with you. You go on back to Isaac in your own country, I will be with you. It'll be cool. 43, and Laban answered and said unto Jacob, these daughters 
are my daughters, and these, uh, these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters or unto their children which they have born? How can I harm my own? Well, there'd be a little bit of a question as to, I mean, he's talking ownership here. It is true that there is birth daughters, but he's, he did sell them. And all those cattle, they were not his. In, however you want to look at it, the agreement was made between he and Jacob that the division would be, and it was even appointed by God back in the 11th verse and 12th verse of how to accomplish it, to see that Jacob was blessed. Um, so uh, Laban's stretching the truth all the way out of socket to the point he's lying. And yet, give him the credit that it is his natural-born daughters. That part being true. But not the property. 44. Now, therefore, come thou and let us make a covenant. I am thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. Uh, Laban knows the chips are down, and God has spoken, and this is the way it's going to be. 45. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. This is, we're going to have a line here. It'll be a border, actually. 46, And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones, and they took stones, and made an heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. It's where the covenant was made, and it was to sign and secure the covenant, whereby uh, this would be the border, this would be the line. Verse 47, and Laban called it Jigar Shehadetah, uh, but Jacob called it Gedi, and uh, this is an interesting thing. One word is Hebrew, and the other is Aramaic or Chaldee, whichever you want to call it. Uh, Laban uses the Chaldee tongue, the Babylonian tongue, whereas Jacob uses the Hebrew tongue. And, and they both mean the same thing. It means the, the witness heap. Okay. This, is where, this is our witness. This is where it happens. 48. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Gehid, which is the witness. That's where it was. 49. And Mizpah, watchtower to you, for he said, the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. Let this watchtower be uh, the covenant maker or breaker between us when we're not even here. Verse 50, if thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt, betwixt me and thee. Verse 51, And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. Laban liked to lay it out, didn't he? And uh, Jacob is the one that kind of set it up, but he's, he's, he's uh, letting the hot air flow here. 52, this heap be witness, and of course that was the name of it, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. This is the point of separation. This is the border. And so it was. And this is well that they're making this covenant. And that uh, Laban, he, he sees the chips are down. He's through. Uh, he's, he, is, he might as well leave on friendly terms for his offspring and for his son-in-law because it's over. But here at least he doesn't want any trouble, any war, but wants peace so they have this witness place where all this went down and it is the point 
if you would, of um, separation, whereby they would have no trouble. Verse 53, to continue. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us, and Jacob swear by the fear of his father Isaac. Now remember, Abraham is the father, grandfather of Jacob. And Nahor is the father of the house of um, Laban. And in other words, they were brothers. Nahor and Abraham were brothers. And so it is that they should have gotten along. There shouldn't have been any problem. But then Almighty God is in this, just as he is always in the life of one that serves him. He sees to it. God sees to it. Well, it's God's blessings on those that serve him. God always takes care of his own. And you will never find better living proof to the extent that our Father will go to, even in animal husbandry, and even in uh, uh, the, the subtlety of a very wise person, he handles quite nicely, whereby they end with peace and with a covenant whereby they both serve the living God. And, and so it is that, um, that it comes forward to this point. And how precious it is that our Father leads and guides and directs. And how comforting it is to see the extent our Father will go to. To see if you're serving Him and He promises you blessings, how, how you attain them. He looks out for his own. You can count on it. He gives you knowledge and wisdom and leadership whereby you can lead and whereby you can be blessed. How precious it is to serve the living God. How precious it is to have the living God with you. And more precious that you're with him, pleasing him, caring. We're many times putting your own self to one side and letting his service always come first. Our Father is always first. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always see that you have those blessings because Jacob was a perfect sign of how God blesses the house of Israel. For he, Jacob, was the father of it of the 12 patriarchs, which make up the true house of Israel. And here you have the founding and the blessings and God's overseeing hand. And all through the years, as these covenants transpire, that, that is to say, as they continue forward, you can still count on it. Father loves his children. Father created all of his children for his pleasure, all races, all colors, all creeds. But he especially looks over this house through which the Christ child will come, which is the Savior of all peoples, whatever race, color, or creed. This is why that Abraham would be named the father of many nations and a blessing to many nations. Why? Not because of Abraham, but because of his offspring, which, be the, which would be the Lord Jesus Christ. So how precious it is when we analyze the simple, actual life and feelings of these people, for they were common people. They were common people. By that I mean they had the same desires and needs that you would have today. And they, but they live for the living God. And Jacob, being blessed by the living God, always put him first. You want to be blessed? Then you should do the same. Always put your father first and know that he is not through with these patriarchs. He is not through with this house. This house will reign supreme right up to the very end. Why? Because God blesses them. 
if you're a part, and you are if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, then the blessings flow forward for you. God takes care of his own. Verse 54 to continue. And Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount. He thanked God and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount, praising God and thanking God for the deliverance and for the blessings. You know, he went as a small as a lad to take a wife among his own people rather than the Hittite women. And he went with nothing other than his own presence and his love for God. He came back uh, with quite a family and much cattle and much blessings because he was a child of the living God and God blessed him. But he in turn thanked God, giving God the credit because it was God that led him, taught him, and in following the instructions of God is why he can stand here this day with these goods, these wives, this family. 55 to continue. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them, and Laban departed and returned into his place. He separated himself, but here is the witness, here is the border. Uh, he will certainly miss this family and the blessings. And well, how can you say that? Well, he's going to miss them because he's still playing around with household gods. Though Rachel stole it, not because of the God, but because it was gold. She was a little stubborn. She wanted to make sure she got part of her inheritance. She did.